presented alive on the internet before an audience that is watching now. Can you tell me how to get, how to get to Jupiter at night? How to get to Jupiter at night? This episode of Jupiter Night is brought to you by FreshBooks.com. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Jupiter at Night. My name is Chris. My name is Jeremy. Well, hey there, J-Man. You remember me? <laughs> Tonight's episode, we're talking about the new Liza worm that's been going around and attacking the internet like some sort of maniac. But before we get to that, welcome back, J-Man. Thanks. Where have you been? It's been like nine days since I was here. And that's like a long time. I went and became famous in the local theater scene. Ooh, good job. I was like signing autographs and making millions, but I decided this is where my passion lies. Wow. So I'm back here not making anything. Why don't you fund us for a few months? Okay. Just throwing that out there with okay, millions. Right. Sure. If nothing else, maybe I, I can get manage. an autograph. Actually, the only thing I really got from the show is a head cold. <laughs> <laughs> Which is perfect for tonight's episode. So we're talking about infections. No, I don't know. Actually, why don't we talk about Liza Worm? Because this is, this is kind of interesting. Now, depending on what you've heard, you may or may not have gotten the right story. One yeah. of the things we're going to spend a little time on tonight is how crazily overhyped right now... You can find stories out there that 4 million websites have been infected. Probably by now, because we stopped researching an hour ago, it's probably up to 8 million. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> so we're going to talk about the hype aspect of it too, but there is some real world infections going on out there. So we'll talk about those, what's happening to people's machines and how you can clean it up. Mm -hmm. But before we get to that, let's talk a little bit about Liza Moon itself, because it's kind of an interesting approach. It's, like it's this, almost like a two-pronged attack. Yeah, they're calling it like a blended approach. Yeah. And it's kind of like the new in way. A lot of people are just referring to it as a SQL injection. Mm -hmm. And that means you are able to use like a bunch of extra code that you can pop into your SQL server and take control of it. Okay, right. that's a SQL injection. And that's and basically that's um, using a vulnerability of, of SQL to yeah, their and advantage. It could, be, it could be a vulnerability also in the website. So if you know that if you if you if you uh, if you talk to the website in this particular way, and you able to, you're able to give it this particular bit of information, it passes that on to its database server, and you can have like executable code in that string. But it's not actually infecting these individual websites. What it's doing right. is injecting a redirect yeah, uses, to another website. It uses that owning of the SQL server, mm -hmm. and this is where the blended aspect comes in because it uses then a. A second part of the attack is what's called a cross-site scripting vulnerability. Mm -hmm. So you own SQL, and then you're able to update code on the website, and then people browse like a trusted, good website, and you're just... Yeah, well, iTunes was infected. Yeah, yeah, for a little bit now. It was mainly only on their... I believe it was only on their website. Well, if you use the iTunes interface, it's not allowed right. to... Uh, Execute the commands yeah, that would have yeah. potentially infected you. But, but if, if you went to their website, if you're on the website or if you're on one of the many sites that were actually infected, you could just be browsing along and you get this really nasty antivirus uh, virus, antivirus poser. Mm -hmm. It's a virus that poses itself as this cleanup tool, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. But so the the big impact here is just how many general trusted websites got got owned. Now at this point, we we have uh, some more information in the show notes, but it looks like it's only applying to Windows, Microsoft SQL servers, mm -hmm. and only to websites that are already kind of vul vulnerable to getting owned in this way, to getting taken advantage. Yeah. I, I guess like a lot of the basic attacks, sites like WordPress and mm -hmm. other things like that have already built in protections against this. So it's not as big of a deal as a lot of people are making it sound. Well, and uh, we've seen some estimates that it's actually only like 300,000 sites or something like well, that. Well, I have another estimate that I'm going to throw in your face that I think you're going to find pretty interesting because sure. that's really the whole angle of this thing is just how crazy overhyped it's gotten. And I, I think I know why. Yeah. And I want to call somebody out on it. But, okay. but first, I want to tell you about our new sponsor for Jupiter Night. We have a sponsor? We do. How awesome is that? <laughs> Jupiter Night is sponsored all week by FreshBooks.com. And I could not be more excited to have this as our sponsor. So if you've done invoicing before, like if you're a small business or an independent contractor or a freelancer, heck, even a construction person like, yeah. like your dad, mm -hmm. you have to invoice. Yes, you have to. And that's how you make your money. That's how you make your money. By asking for it. And of course, <laughs> that's not why, like I didn't get into IT consulting to do invoicing and paperwork. I got in it to work on computers. Mm -hmm. I swear to God, Jeremy, every time I invoice, it's like doing a micro version of my taxes every single time. That's a really good way to put it. It's awful, yeah. right? I, I, I yeah. avoid it. You have to figure out your time. You have to figure out your materials, your, your mileage, honestly, everything. I've probably tried a dozen different ways to invoice. I've tried super expensive applications. I've tried 
free office suites. I've tried document templates. Mm-hmm. But FreshBooks.com is really where it's at. It's easy online invoicing, and it makes you look professional. And we've we've really, really, really got to say that we, we use it in-house now. I'm an IT contractor by day, mm-hmm. and then we also have sponsorships on the networks that we invoice for. Oh my gosh, you guys, it is totally changing up our back end. As an IT contractor, I've seen a lot <laughs> of different systems end. over the years, and I know... I know FreshBooks is so much nicer than most of those out there, but it actually gets better than that. Not only do they have electronic billing where you can go in there, you fill out your invoice, it can send it electronically. If they want to do PayPal, Mm -hmm. it'll send them a PayPal link and they can just pay you that way. Yeah. And what is so slick is if they do pay via PayPal, it automatically marks that invoice as paid electronically in this FreshBooks. It updates your books for you? It automatically updates your books. Nice. I love it. Plus, it's usually you get paid a little faster when you're getting paid electronically, which is also the Mm -hmm. other nice thing. But check this out. You can go over to FreshBooks.com right now, and you can get a free account when you sign up. Did you say free, Chris? I did. In fact, if you go over there and sign up for your free account, look for the little area that, area in there that says, how did you hear about us? Because check this out, J-Man. Okay. If you enter in the code JUPITER, just enter in the phrase. It doesn't mm-hmm. get you anything particular special, although it will enter you for a drawing for a free birthday cake. Birthday cake? A free birthday cake. FreshBooks is going to give away. You ready for this? Yeah. They're going to give away a birthday cake to each one of our Jupiter Night viewers one week, every week in April. Every single so week So everybody April, that signs up this week for Fresh Books, use the co- one of you is going to get a cake. Use the phrase Jupiter, and you'll be signed up for a free cake. And one cake a week is going to is gonna be given out to a Jupiter Night viewer. Awesome. That is awesome, right? Who doesn't like cake? Who doesn't like cake? It's not on my diet, and, and but not, I still like it. <laughs> I want you to sign up, though, man, because I want your cake. <laughs> You're doubling my chance. Okay, okay, okay. okay you all right. can so have use, my cake. Use the phrase Jupiter, and I might get your cake. So check out FreshBooks.com. And if you have a smartphone and you do on-site uh, time tracking, check out some of the apps. FreshBooks mm-hmm. has an API they've opened up, and so a lot of apps are now writing to be able to just port your, your information into FreshBooks. Yep. Using things like location services, you can automatically track your time. I mean, we're talking some serious life conveniences, and you can check it out for free. So FreshBooks.com, and thanks to FreshBooks for sponsoring this episode of Jupiter at Night. So speaking of sites that have all of your uh, valuable information sure. yeah, right like, there on their databases. Right, I know. They, you know, there's been like <laughs> Ypsilon recently. Yeah. Ypsilon had a massive breach that uh-huh. we don't think was related to this whole... Uh, I don't know. The timing is really accurate. It's possible said, they could though. have used a similar SQL... But you know, again, it, this goes back to... If, if you are launching a web product, like, like let's go back to like FreshBooks, for mm-hmm. example. They have an online web presence... And you know what they do? And I think really if you're serious about having a robust site that is as safe as possible online, you got to use a Linux or Unix backend. You know, like FreshBooks.com does. They're on Linux, they're on MySQL. Mm-hmm. So they weren't even, even had to be worried about this vulnerability. Just like Jupyter Broadcasting, we were never concerned about it because this particular one doesn't even apply to us. Right. So many websites in 2008 and in 2009 were taken down because of, my, uh, because of Microsoft SQL injections. And these kinds of things just keep going around. And now, what's even worse is now they've now they've sort of transgressed into this multi-blended mode where mm-hmm. they can also infect your PC just yeah. by browsing the site. And that's the awful part. That redirect is sending people to what they're calling a rogue AV, which is also they're getting a new word for it that I really like. <laughs> it's starting to grow roots over this, and oh, I yeah. like it. Scareware. Scareware, Jim. Ooh. <laughs> but that's what it is. It loads up like this false little flash yeah. animation yeah, that got makes it look it like here. you're I- infected. It, and then the actual thing looks legit. It looks totally legit. In fact, it's even got an ad for Intel up there on the corner. It does, or AMD, <laughs> depending if you have an AMD box. It actually changes right. based on your processor, which is also another level of legitimacy. They change out some of the logos depending on your system. Look at that. Uh, WebSense put up a great YouTube video. WebSense are really the guys that started tracking this, and I'm going to talk a little more about them in a sec. But okay. if you've seen this before, it looks like you're running antivirus software on your computer. And if you're just a standard end user, mm-hmm. you would have no idea that this stuff is not legitimate. Right. So that's a serious issue. And then what they do is they move you along this system where they give you this full system report, Mm -hmm. And then they take you conveniently to a payment screen that says special discount offer where you can put (laughs) in your credit card information and then they will remove the infection from your computer. And they even- You pay for a license is what it looks like. You look like you're buying a license. And they even put like MasterCard and Visa's logo on there and like Mm -hmm. a little star that makes you think everything's safe. Uh, It's it's, it's completely not. It's super shady stuff. It's totally a scam. If you're seeing this stuff on your computer, by the way, we, well, we have a link that it's, it's, a very involved cleanup process, but yeah, it can have, be done. We have two links for you. So if you've gotten bit by this or you know somebody that does, like both of us know My somebody. My parents got it. Yeah, and I have a client that yeah. got it. Uh, if you if you <coughs> go into our show notes, you'll find links for one-step removal using Malwarebytes. 
but you have to catch it at a certain phase of the infection, basically yeah. before anybody clicked anything. So maybe they got the pop up. Yeah. But they haven't clicked anything yet. You know, a lot of people now are trained. Oh, I, this doesn't look right. Right. A lot of people aren't. Those are the smart people. Those are the smart people that don't <laughs> click. That don't but click. If, if you got somebody that clicked, I don't know if this works. We've had some, we've had some different reports in the, in the live chat room. But if you've got somebody that clicked, we do have some manual step up step processes that you're uh -huh. probably going to want to grab like a live CD or at least go into safe mode. Yeah. Time consuming, but reliable you, seems you, to reinstall windows. That that's the best. If you, you know, yeah. these steps we're linking to are sort of like if you can't reinstall for some reason. Right. But some people are even reporting that it, it, depending on the infection, it infects your bootloader. Mm -hmm. The nasty thing about these types of viruses is once it downloads to your computer, that little fake antivirus thing, when you click OK to that, mm -hmm. at that point, it has the opportunity to go just get the latest bad stuff from the internet. Yeah. It doesn't have to use what it was downloaded with. Right. So it's able to just, on demand, get the latest, nastiest stuff. Yeah. So the tactics kind of change quite a bit. But I think the key phrase you want to search for if you're trying to clean this up is like Windows Stability Center. Stability removal. Center, yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. like a fake thing that they put in there that looks, mm -hmm. again, looks legit, but is not legit. I wonder why Microsoft hasn't come out with some sort of statement about this. The fact that this is obviously copyright infringement. Because, yeah, I'm looking at their... Like, well, these, unless Microsoft actually is distributing this. No, 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 of course not. I mean, like, yeah, take a look at this uh, screenshot here. You've got the Windows logo on there. You got Windows with the copyright mm -hmm. on there, which I think actually should be a trademark. And then, uh, you know, you've got Intel's logo on there. Yeah. So you've got Internet Explorer's I mean, logo on there. It looks totally legit. It really does. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, it's not. And they are infringing on the rights of Microsoft to, to make this so. look so... At least using their, their logo in a... And same with MasterCard I, and Visa. You know what? Too. I don't really honestly even care if Microsoft has the resources to do something like this. They should have come out and said, we're going to do something about it. Maybe they Just will. Just to save face. They're slow. Part of the problem was, and I meant to mention this at the top of the show, is it came out and they're like it really started spreading. The news about this started spreading on April first. Right, good timing. And I I saw it and I thought, is that is that fake? Mm. And the other part of the problem, and this is the biggest problem I think, is the reporting has been so wrong on this and hit and miss. Very different hit and people miss. have different information about it. And we we tried we tried very carefully to go through and make sure that. The links we included in tonight's show notes got it as technically right as possible. We spent some time making sure that we weren't mm -hmm. putting bad stuff in there. Now, no guarantee. We had some bad links in there earlier. We did, yeah. But wait, I put those in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's got some. We've got. I mean, we've got breakdowns of how the attack works and all kinds of stuff. You want to get super geeky, but the one that's the most interesting is uh, from WhiteFurDesign.com. And these guys really seem to know their stuff. They seem to be really familiar with these types of attacks. They seem to be. They probably created it. I don't think so. <laughs> but what they do mention is just... I'm just playing into the hype, man. <laughs> yeah, that would be a lot more exciting. Uh, what they do mention is the number of websites that are infected is way, way off. What people are doing to get that number <clears throat> is they're going over to Google and they're putting in a specific Google query search and they're searching for a URL. Yeah, that ur.php. Yeah, and, and the thing about the way Google indexes your website is they don't index the HTML code. Right. So you can't go to Google and search for HTML well, source Well, except code. in rare cases, some sites do dump before they load. That's probably where they, a lot of the results are coming from, but the, probably the biggest source are websites like this one that are talking about it. Yeah. Because every site that talks about it also shows up in the index. If it's actually in the, the text yeah. of what they're talking about. Yeah, and, and, and some sites that will automatically like dump some database information to the page as it renders, some mm -hmm. of those sites will do it for many, many pages. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to gauge based on that. And plus, mm -hmm. you don't know if one of these sites has a, you know, 30 million visitor base and another one has 100 person Well, that's base. another thing I found really interesting. You know, the, the actual attack itself doesn't have a name. It's not like there's something written into the code right. that says, hey, I'm Liza Moon. Right. No, the reason that they gave it that name is because that's one of the first sites that was diagnosed that with, the, with the invasion. That was one of the first sites. So that, that means they that found if, if Jupiter Broadcasting was the first site that was infected, then this would be called the Jupiter Broadcasting infection that would or be, injection. That would be epic. I thought at first that's like, oh man, amazing free PR. And then I went, you know, when you Google search for Liza Moon, these that website does not come up at all. They got like <laughs> they got Google bombed out of existence. So. <laughs> I don't know. I just, that's a that's a give it's and a, take a there. Fine line to tread there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so I just wanted to I want to land. I'll just maybe wrap up part of the of my critical look at this with these with the uh, white fur design. They point out that instead of the millions of sites that are being reported, mm -hmm. it's more like probably. A few thousand, maybe in the 10,000 range. What? No kidding. How so small? Well, the reason why they think that is they actually looked at how the SQL injection takes place. Uh huh. And they believe that it's been specially crafted for certain types of website 
designs. And so it kind of does like GeoCities. It does like well, yeah, or, or you know something else that's widespread. And they do it does like a certain amount of probing, and it can only probe for so many things, and then it goes. Yeah. So uh, and because the way people are getting these numbers is so flawed, they're able to reproduce certain things and just get drastically different numbers. Right. But when they actually do a crawl of their own with some scripts that they have built, they mm -hmm. only actually come back with a pretty low number of infected sites. So it could be blown way out of proportion. So you think that the hype on this is actually, well, you mentioned WebSense earlier. I that did. That they're the ones yeah. that kind of broke the case. And and some people are pointing fingers and saying maybe WebSense is trying to make a bigger deal. They're taking a legitimate issue. I mean, we've seen Semantic and McAfee do this for mm -hmm, their mm -hmm. for their products. WebSense is a security firm. Right. You break some big security story, you kind of make a name for yourself. Maybe the incentive is to play the story as much as you can get out of it. Yeah. Not necessarily doing the wrong thing because they are informing people about things that are the right, but if it's only a infected. couple thousand and they found it, but then they're able to type into Google and get three million results, then they can show people, they're, look, it's a like, terrible thing. Their official number, WebSense's official number is like three hundred, like the 300,000 number I think you quoted Yeah, earlier. that's what I heard. And now it's like the New York Times and all these other websites that are going with a two million figure. So the, it's, the, it's the not tech press that's mm -hmm. really blowing out of proportion because they just don't get it. Like yeah. I'm seeing all kinds of wrong stuff written about this. Stuff that they're saying like SQL 2003, <laughs> it was on the SANS dot org website which is a which is known for it's a, it's a security resource yeah on the internet. yeah yeah and they got that it's a, it affects microsoft sql server 2003 that's not even a real product that's the link i put in the show notes by the way well but it's no longer there you didn't know <laughs> no i didn't know they didn't know but i'm just saying there's a lot of little <laughs> they details they should have known they should have known they should that's known. what gets me a little bit worked up about it is there's a lot of different things getting said that are not all true yeah so take a look at the note that is happening we both know people that got infected we've seen sites in fact i had all ready for the show, a demo. I was going to get a VM going, and I was going to be like, I'm going to go to this site now, J-Man, in, in, in Internet Explorer. Seriously, if you're using Internet Explorer, just stop it. If you watch this video, Internet Explorer just falls down almost immediately, so just stop using Internet Explorer. <laughs> stop it. But what I was going to do was get an Internet Explorer going in a VM, go to one of these infected websites, and get my machine and infected, get infected right here on the air. Now, I've got, I've got <coughs> video of that happening, and I, again, mm -hmm. link in the show notes, and I'm playing it right now. Yeah, somebody in our chat room is actually just asking if they could tell an easy way to of whether or not they're infected. Oh, well, you if you see any like of these pop-ups, yeah, yeah. these are some obvious uh, symptoms. Yeah, and uh, the site that I wanted to use to get myself infected with was gone. It's off the, offline. So people oh. are actively trying to clean it up, but I think it happened on April Fool's, kind of slowed people down a bit. They yeah, a step. you bet. Yeah. It was funny, though, listening to the radio over the weekend, you know, people calling into the tech shows and stuff like Leo's and 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 uh you just hear question after question my machine's infected my machine's infected and it's like just oh poor people and if you know you we're looking at it now just that's if you get these screens You've it's already problem. too late actually if yeah. you're getting these screens if you're getting these screens it is too late because um, you already clicked okay you give give it your best effort but uh let us know how that goes for you. And there's some links in the show notes <laughs> if you do want to try it out. Yeah. In fact, let us know if they work. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. going to have to go try them on my parents' rig. Yeah. Happy now, times. Uh, we've got we've got some new stuff coming up for the network later on. We'll be talking about that. In fact, watch for a <laughs> blog post on our Tumblr page coming up from that. But uh, just, a, just a little uh, something to keep in mind is we're going to have a trial month in April coming up where we're going to try different shows, and you're going to see more information about that. It's part of a growth and expansion effort that we're going underway. Mm-hmm. And a lot of news coming up about Linux Fest Northwest for the Linux Action Show later. That's going to be so much fun. Yeah, if you're just like a Jupiter I mean, you Broadcasting guys know, fan. I, in I'm the not area. Or like a really big Linux no, guy or anything no. like that. So I mean, I'm not really way into time, it. But time to time. Yeah. But Linux Fest Northwest, that is going to be ballin'. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to have a ton of fun. We're going to have cameras there. So if you are just in the Washington area, even if you're not a Linux fan, it's free to attend. So just stop by and say hi. Yeah. Maybe make it on the live stream and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's going to be at the end of the month, though. So you'll have way more time to worry about that. We'll, we'll remind you thousands of times yeah. by then. All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for tuning in tonight's episode of Jupiter Night. And thanks to FreshBooks for sponsoring the first episode of Jupiter Night. Mm. We look forward to uh, talking about them a little more in future episodes. And everyone, Jupiter Night is live at 8 p.m. Pacific over at jblive.tv, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And you can join our live chat room and hang out with the chat room. If you dare. Us, yeah, and tell us how uh, you think of what we're talking about as we talk about it. That's mm -hmm. kind of the fun aspect of mm -hmm. it. All right. That just about wraps us up. Thanks so much for watching tonight's episode of Jupiter at Night, and we'll see you tomorrow night.